This membrane has receptors and effectors that are constantly receiving and sending signals and are able to attune to faint vibrational energies in the environment. The existing beliefs are that a human body is a biochemical machine controlled by genes and therefore the behavior, emotions and character of our biology, our health, our lives are controlled by genes which we don't control. So this is what we taught people. You're a victim. Genes control your life. You didn't pick them. You can't change them. The genes you end up with program what's going to happen. My experiments on stem cells, which I started in 1967, I'd isolate one stem cell, put it in a petri dish, and then it would divide every 10 hours. So I took all the cells, split them up into three groups, and then just put them in three petri dishes. And then I changed the growth medium, the constituents of the environment, in each of the three dishes. In one dish, the cells form bone. The second dish, they form muscle. and the third dish, they form fat cells. What controlled the fate of a cell? And the first thing you have to say is, well, wait, they were all genetically identical when they were put in a dish. So obviously the genes didn't control it because they all had the same genes. What was different was the environment. And all of a sudden in my career, it said, oh my gosh, here I am teaching genes control life and the cells are telling me genes respond to life. And since you can control the response, you can control your life. It's how you read the environment, how your mind perceives the environment. And if you understand this, then you could lead yourself to the most wonderful expression on this planet to be fully alive and fully healthy by just how you respond to the world. Another very interesting fact is that cells have specific receptors that receive environmental signals carrying the identity information. And these are called cell receptors. So when a cell receives information from another cell, that is not carrying the same identity signal, then this foreign cell would be rejected. For example, if I put your kidney into my body, then this kidney would be rejected under normal circumstances without the use of immunosuppressants. What is this identity information that all the 50 trillion cells in our body tune to? What and where is this I? Scientists have been looking to answer these questions ever since the birth of science and through the latest findings from many scientific domains are beginning to realize that this identity information is not just something within us but rather spread out everywhere in the field. This seems to be the same field where all the particles seems to break the rules of logic where two particles can be at two places at the same time simultaneously or can communicate together instantaneously at any distance where atoms are both particles and waves depending on the observer and when we die this field is still there and if reincarnation does exist then it would make perfect sense that our new body would be simply retuned to this environmental field all that it would need is a body with the same self receptors very interesting fact in biology is that there no two human beings are the same and I can say that from a biological expression in regard to a simple observation. If you take cells or organs out of your body and put them into anybody else's body, those cells and organs will be rejected by that individual uh, because their immune system will recognize it as not self. So basically it says each one of us has a self. And what was very interesting in understanding the nature of the cell's nervous system, the relationship of the membrane to the cell, was that on the surface of our cells are groups of antennas or receptors. A group of them, uh, specifically studied by medicine, are referred to as self-receptors. And to me that's a very profound uh, uh, title for these particular receptors, self-receptors, receivers of self. So why this is relevant is that these receptors that receive an identity are on the outer surface of the cell. The relevance to that is that whatever the cell signal is, it is out in the environment and picked up by these receptors. Significance to my perception in this is that our identities are not within our biology. Our identities are part of a field and that our biology downloads this information from the field. So the significance is, is that when we talk about our personal identity, we can talk about that identity isolated and localized with our physical body, but we could also talk about the same information or identity that is present in the field. The identity is part of the field and spread all over the surface of the planet. Significance is this, is that then two people 
have two physical bodies and they can interact, but they also have two environmental identifications, meaning some kind of energy in the field that is unique to them. Since the field is all entangled and integrated with each other all over the world, that means people are never really separated from each other by physical distances in regard to their personal identity, even though their bodies may be separated. So basically, the nature of people communicating with each other is to recognize that individual identities as vibrational frequencies in a field can interact with each other, especially if there's something called harmonic resonance, meaning the two frequencies share wavelengths together so that when they come together, they vibrate together. Bruce Lipton is one of the world's most respected biologists, and he was recently awarded a prize for his enormous contribution in biology. So I think we should give him some credit to what he has got to say. Although all the implications from the 10 experiments I've shown you suggest that we are living in a very different world with very different rules, something that many of us would previously regard it as a voodoo mambo jumbo stuff, but this is simply because we were conditioned to think this way since the early childhood. However, nowadays, there is no going back to how we used to see the world before. We definitely need to reconsider how we perceive this reality and how we respond to it using our mind, emotions and intentions. Before we do that, we first we have to understand how our beliefs were formed since early childhood, how much do we want to believe something and how much we are looking for confirmations of our beliefs. We need to be able to see the cage that is made up of all our opinions that we are not able or do not want to change once they have been proved to be inaccurate. That is what I call a scientific and inquisitive mind, a mind that is able to examine its own limits and does not get attached to any beliefs but rather explores everything and sees how things start to match together like the pieces of a puzzle. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'll now focus on the fractal holographic nature of evolution, nature, man and the universe. What are fractals and why do I want to talk about them? A fractal is a geometric pattern that is repeated at every scale and cannot be represented by classical geometry. As you will see shortly, what is interesting is that nature is following such a fractal structure. Whether we talk about evolution, nature, our brain, all the whole universe, we can always see this pattern repeating. And more and more scientists are beginning to realize this and consequently we can see more scientific publications from different domains making use of fractal geometry. The term fractal comes from the Latin word fractus, which means broken. As I've already said, it is an ever-repeating geometric pattern. No matter how much we zoom into a design, we will always find the same pattern repeating itself and reflecting the whole. Fractals were theoretically known for a long time. However, it was not until 1970s when they were first visualized, thanks to the processing power of computers that was necessary to create these fractals made of millions of repeating patterns. And the following video shows the Mandelbrot set, which clearly shows ever-repeating self-similar pattern. If the universe is following this fractal geometry, then we are also part of this pattern, and therefore we should already have access to all the information that is contained within the whole. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old and the first 3 billion years were all about single-celled organisms. It does seem that the evolution is in general about the expansion of awareness. Single-celled organisms are a good example. Evolution took so long making these organisms expand their awareness and this is directly proportional to the number of receptors effectors on their membranes. Once the physical constraints did not allow a single cell to grow much bigger and expand its awareness, these cells started to work in a community to create multicellular organisms that have far more awareness. And finally a human, which is a community of 50 to 100 trillion cells working together. Whatever a body does, cell does as well. A cell has got its own reproduction, respiratory and excretory systems. It feels and communicates with other cells. 
each cell contains enough information to make a whole new body.